Hey guys, we are here again this week uh, with our children's life groups, and so we want to just have a conversation with you today about some direction and some places where we're headed and kind of where we've been, where we're going over the next few weeks, and uh, we are glad that Pierre has been with us, but Pierre is... Uh, he's gone, man. He's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He shipped out to Mexico and left us. He's not. He's in Mexico, but he, he may not be permanently gone. You never know. You never can tell about yeah. Pierre. I mean, <laughs> he seems to be a free spirit. Pierre could come back at yeah. any moment and check in and just see what's going on, all right? He could. Mr. Scott, what's happening with us these days? What are we going to be looking at? Well, you know, we're right in the middle of closing out one of our sections and going into another. And, you know, when we do that, you know, our sections always have a big Bible question. Right. You know, and the big Bible question that we've been dealing with in this last section is, is why did Jesus become human? And, you know, the answer to that question is he became human so that he could obey his father's plans and to rescue sinners. And, you know, so that's what we're, we're kind of closing that out. This will be our last lesson that has to do with that question. And then we'll start into another section that I have a different question. Well, in, in today's lesson, you know, we're talking about a lot about God's plan, Jesus' plan. And it, it's a really amazing that Jesus' plan, well, it shouldn't really be amazing. I mean, he's perfect. I right. Mean, so, of course, his plan is perfect. But he lays out a plan for us to follow, not only the plan for showing us, you know, the death, his, how his plan for restoring us into that fellowship and saving us, not only that, but how he, le he develops a plan for us and shows us how we should minister and how we should go forward with our job as uh, being saved once we're saved we become disciples yeah i talked about uh in our midweek we talked about how god is creator and how he created us to be his masterpiece um and how um, we are to do good works for him yeah yeah absolutely. we're his masterpiece and so he he lays out this plan and that's what our lesson about today is, is was his plan and you know he went about we, we've talked about jesus and starting his ministry and as he started his ministry large crowds begin to gather around and listening to him preach and you know he they were following him and one day as he's walking along the sea of galilee he uh seen two guys and, you know he seen peter and his brother andrew well peter and andrew they were kind of your kind of people yeah because yeah, they were fishermen yeah they were out fishing <laughs> they were out fishing and jesus seen them and he called them and he he said come follow me and i will make you fishers of men now, I know that would have sounded really foreign to them. I mean, what does it mean to be a fisher of men? But, you know, Jesus has this great ability, possesses this great ability that he can look on the inside and see what's on there. So sure. he was looking inside them and knew that that was the type of people that was. So he called them to follow him, and they left their fishing nets right then and went with him. Well, a little later on, you know, he come across James and John, you know, and uh, they were brothers kind of interesting that he called two sets of brothers mm -hmm. to start out with and he asked them to come follow him and they left what they were doing and we think about that as an easy thing because we read that and then we just kind of pass over it but the truth is when he says come follow me and they left everything they left all of their security all of their financial means everything that they had uh put their faith and trust in in that moment is now gone and now they have to put their faith and trust in who Jesus is. Absolutely. I mean, they don't even have a job anymore. Yeah. Their right. job is following Jesus, <laughs> right. you know, and doing what Jesus said. And like you said, it's really easy for us just to say, well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can give up I follow friends. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I follow Jesus. I can be a Christian. Yeah. You know, and, and but to so totally follow him was a whole other thing. Well, the next thing he comes across was Matthew. You know, and Matthew was a tax collector. Nobody liked tax collectors, you know, tax collectors were, they were cheaters, so to speak, you know, how they made their living was they charged you taxes and they took more than what they were supposed to take. And so he asked Matthew to follow him and Matthew left everything and followed Jesus. And he even left so many things behind that he left his desire to be something behind. 
Yeah. I mean, he immediately, one of the first things we see that he did is he called a party with all of the, his fellow tax collectors and said, hey, I want to show you this guy that I found. You know, and that's a lot of the way it is when, when we come to know Jesus. I know when I was saved, you know, I couldn't wait to tell my best friend, you know, hey, man, I've accepted Christ, you know, and, and you ought to do this too, you know. Yeah. You ought to find what I found, that joy that I found. Well, you know, when they did that, that immediately became a uh, topic of dissension with the Pharisees. You know, they're always looking at, to find something on Jesus. And they said, well, what your master's doing or your rabbi, your teacher, the person you're following, he's talking to sinners. Yeah. You know, I mean, and Jesus was really quickly pointed out to them. He said, look, that's who I've come for. I've not come for people that know me. I've come to reach those that don't know me. I've come to save those and restore those that don't have a relationship with me. Yeah. And, you know, so he did that. Well, you know, I don't know how many of y'all know all the 12 disciples. Uh, you know, I, Mr. Scott, even when I come time to doing this, I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I called everybody up and said, tell me how many of you name. Well, I'm going to tell you, I would have struck out pretty quick. <laughs> I don't know if you knew them or not. But, so here, here they are. These are the men Jesus chose. He chose Simon, who was called Peter. He called his, Simon's brother, Andrew. James and John, the two brothers, they were called the sons of thunder. You know, I don't know what that typically would mean. Maybe they were loudmouth. <laughs> I don't know. but they were. I'm not sure either. Uh, uh, we do have a story, you know, where their mama got involved with them with Jesus <laughs> one time, and it was, it was really interesting. Philip and Bartholomew. Matthew and Thomas, old doubt and Thomas is in there. James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus. 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 That, what a name. Mm -hmm. You know, Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot, and of course, Judas Iscariot. Those were the list of 12. And you know, what's really interesting about that plan is, is that Jesus pulled a small group of people there, and he invested his life in it. And, you know, and I talked about how that it's not only did he show us a plan for salvation, he showed us a plan for ministry sure. and how that we should be investing in people. Right. And how that those people live the life, just like Matthew lived the life, so that others would follow them. You know, I got on my World Changers hat, yeah. you know, today. And I, I love World Changers, and their theme song is so, so Right on point. <laughs> don't make we, me do the theme song. No, come on, Kevin. No, no, no I mean, don't make me do the theme uh, song. Okay, I won't make you do the theme <laughs> song. But, you know, the theme song actually says, you know, that you can be a world changer. You can be a world changer. Yeah, shining, shining the light, light for those, those in danger. danger. All right, that's, yeah. that's enough. That's, that's enough of that. Yeah, that's, but, you know, what we're doing is we're shining the light. For those in danger. Spreading the love of our Lord and Savior. You can change the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, you literally can. You know, you can change the world by being that shining light. Just following Jesus. Just like his disciples followed him. And you know, that's the thing that we need to take home from this. Is that Jesus came to earth. He became human. He was just like us. He showed us a plan. And he laid out a plan for us. And that plan is to live for him and follow him. And by us doing that, we can lead others to find him through that example. And that's Christianity in a nutshell. That's, that's our job in a nutshell. Yeah, Jesus, you know, he, um, he preached to thousands at times. And sometimes you get the picture of we think that, Churches are great if they have big services and we have a lot of people. Um, Jesus did preach to thousands, but he poured into 12. And even out of that 12, he had three that he spent even more time with. And, and, and you can see how they changed the world just themselves. Uh, Jesus modeled that, and it's a model for us as well on what our mission is, how we're to accomplish um, our mission to share Christ is one-on-one, -on -one, a discipleship, and then that person disciples another, disciples another. And it doesn't negate, it doesn't take away the fact that we preach to the large crowds. Um, but you see Jesus as he goes, 
and the people he spends the most time with are these 12. Right. And, you know, in his last words, the Great Commission, yeah. go ye therefore, teach, baptize. You know, that's the discipleship laid out in fourth. So he gives us that's our role. So what do you need to do? Think about it. Think about some people in your life that you want to be that shining light toward and be intentional about that with your friends. Pick out some uh, uh, some friends of yours that you really want to show Christ to and live on point for Christ. Hey, just so you know, little spoiler alert coming on. We're starting a new section next week, and our key passage, guess what our key passage is? I don't know. John 3.16. John 3.16, all right. That's our key right. passage. So, you guys, you know, I'm not, we don't have it. I don't have candy to pass out for everybody that's got, knows John 3.16, you know, like we were doing for, but that's our key passage. Look it over, whosoever. See you guys later.